Today on Reviver Archive, we're going to be making molded salmon. Now, when I first heard molded salmon, I have to be honest, I thought it was actually salmon that had some edible form of mold on it. And I wasn't sure if that could be a thing. There's so many different food trends. But no, this recipe was submitted by Mrs. CFS to Better Homes and Gardens in 1924. So we have a recipe that's nearly 100 years old and molds to match. So if the fish looks a little bit sad and weathered, it's because he's seen a lot of things. So let's get started. There's a ton of ingredients out here, so before you even start, make sure that you have as much things as you can measured out, especially your liquids. And then let's get into this. You're gonna need a double boiler. If you don't have one at home, don't feel bad. Just get a pot and get a bowl that can fit inside the pot and make sure that the water does not touch the bottom of your bowl. So I have this heating up. The first thing I'm gonna do, yeah. salmon in the can. It feels so wrong, but it was 1924, the recipe calls for it. I'm gonna remove it from the can, put it in a strainer, and then get this rinsed underneath really hot water. Now that I have this rinsed and drained, I'm gonna go ahead and fork it um, into, <laughs> okay, that's not how you say it, is it? I'm gonna use my fork, my favorite utensil in the kitchen, and I'm gonna separate this into flakes. I'm a fan of salmon, and this smell is testing my limits. There were no refrigerators in 1924, so that is why there was so much canned salmon, canned this, canned everything being used because you weren't able to keep everything fresh in the refrigerator. The next thing I'm gonna do, two tablespoons of gelatin. These packages are already pre-measured. I must admit, I did not know that gelatin could be unflavored. I've only had it as jello or a jello shot. So I'm gonna take this and then add four tablespoons of cold water. Make sure your water is very, very cold. And we're just gonna put that on top and then, kitchen hack, just use the back of this to mix it a little bit. And then this is gonna sit to the side for about 15 minutes and you're gonna let it do its magic. So, next up in the recipe, taking all the other ingredients, I'm gonna now use my double boiler, so make sure that you have this boiling. So I'm gonna take a half tablespoon of salt, one and a half tablespoons of sugar, a half tablespoon of flour, one teaspoon of dry mustard, and a few grains of <laughs> cayenne pepper. Um, I don't know what utensil they use to get a grain, but I'm gonna just go ahead and freestyle and use a pinch. Next, I'm gonna take two egg yolks that I've already pre-measured out and then separated from the egg white and get this in there. Butter, three fourths cups of milk. And the actual last ingredient, vinegar. So far, this is a lot of ingredients. It's easy to forget. This is actually a recipe that I have to have pulled up in front of me while I'm making it. Having everything laid out really helped. Um, and you have to make sure that you keep stirring once you get your egg yolks added in there, because if you don't, you'll end up with scrambled eggs. They may be great for brunch, but this is not what we want for today. So the next step is to keep stirring until this thickens. There's not exactly a time limit, so you have to monitor it. Looking at the way everything is spread out right now, I'm not really sure how this is gonna turn out. So your guess is as good as mine. Fingers crossed this is something that we're able to revive. Once this starts to thicken, this is a quick test you can do. Pull out your spoon, drag your finger down, and if it still stays, then you know that it's ready to take out. It tastes really good. It's like a little bit of a thicker mustard. Mm, I like it. So I'm gonna set this right here. Look at this, it's like magic. The gelatin is solid. It looks a little bit like crystals. So the recipe says to add this in. <laughs> Let's keep going. And then stir until dissolved. Checking this, all of my gelatin is dissolved, so time to move on to the next step, 
which is to strain this through a cheesecloth. So I'm gonna go ahead and strain this. I'm gonna grab all my corners. Oh, this is like milking a cow. I wonder what my audience thinks. The fish would be proud of me right now. I'm halfway there. Oh, this is a lot. This is definitely, definitely a cow situation. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a little dirty, but you know what? I'm actually impressed. Okay. Perfect, we have it in there. I'm gonna rinse my hands off really fast. Okay, so now that I have that strained, the timer is starting. You need to work really quick so that the gelatin doesn't set without the rest of the ingredients in there. I'm gonna take my salmon, get that in there. And then the recipe also calls for chopped celery and nuts. I'm gonna just freestyle it. It doesn't tell you how many to add. This is all experimental. I have to admit, I have no clue how these flavors are gonna come together. I am a fan of salmon. Um, I'm actually not even turned off that it's in a can. I know the convenience of it works for some people. The gelatin is what I'm not sure about. So I have all of this in here. I'm gonna stir it a little bit more. Now, the real stars of the party are molds. So we're gonna just take this mixture and actually end up filling the molds. Make sure your molds are clean. If you do have antique vintage pieces, you'll wanna just make sure you clean them off. Otherwise, you're good to go. So this is pretty much, imagine just taking tuna salad and putting it in a mold to chill. I'm actually surprised because I thought the gelatin would look more like a jello shot. But um, no, it's not like that. It looks like tuna salad. This is completely different than I thought it would look. I was expecting jello. So the recipe is a little vague. It says chill until it hardens. So it's chill time. Sounds gross. This is this is literally. I mean, it's not tuna salad, but it's tuna salad. Mold is just bad PR. Like that's just not good names. No, because the mold that we're worried about now is like yeah. toxic. Do you think the world is ready for molded salmon again? proud of how this turned out, but I have no clue how it's gonna taste. Let's see what people think. I need to find people to eat this. Excuse me? Everyone's hungry. Would you guys wanna try something? Are you guys hungry? You wanna try something? Are you down to give a recipe a try? Are you down to try a new recipe? Take a look, let me know what you guys think. What is it? Guess, I wanna know some of your guesses. What do you think this is? What are you thinking? <laughs> I have to know some guesses. The recipe is from the 1920s. This is definitely fishy. Yeah, I'm gonna go with mozzarella. Tuna salad, okay. Okay, so one vote tuna salad. It's like a fishy jello type something. Fishy type jello type something? Yes. <laughs> what do you think? Maybe like a fish cake or yeah, jello type. All right, so grab a fork. And the way that this is traditionally eaten, you can have it on the lettuce or you can just take some of the mystery meal and then put a little bit of mayo on top of it. And I can't wait to hear what you guys think. Okay. All right. Oh, boy. What do you think of the, of the mold? Is it pretty? I love it. It's pretty. Okay. Really it's kind of salmon-y. Kind of salmon -y. Any other flavors popping out? There's a lot of veggies. Are you chewing all the way through? <laughs> oh, you went for it. I love it. I love it. Like a full meal with lettuce and the mayo. It tastes like if you had a chicken salad with a fish and 
Okay. So, this recipe is actually molded salmon, and it's from the 1920s. Would this be a recipe that you would vote to revive and bring back to today, or would you want to archive it and leave it in the 1920s? Oh, no. Only the fish shape. Only with the fish shape. All right, thank you. So, we can we got a vote of revive. Revive. Want to do it one, two, three? We're bringing it back? All right, let's go. All right. Yeah. Ready? To camera, guys. One, two, three, revive! revive. <laughs> Do you want some? No? You want to archive it? See, if they leave it here, if it'll come over. I thought birds ate fish. It's an archive for the pigeons, but a revive for the people.